All right, everyone, I'm going to go over my hammock setup real quick, although you've probably seen it a bunch of times before, but here it is. I got my, uh, let me get, just get this undone. This is my uh, homemade uh, Franke style bug net. It's made out of one of those uh, Coglongs, uh, big, huge bug net. I don't exactly know what they call it, but I cut it to uh, the dimensions I want and sewed it up. So what I'm uh, what I'm sporting for my quilts, let's let's get inside. All right, is I have a three quarter length, uh, forty degree hammock gear under quilt, and a forty degree hammock gear uh, top quilt with the uh, the cinch style foot box. And what's nice about this is if it's a real warm summer day, is you could just undo the cinch like that. Let me see if I could hold this somehow without bouncing around too much. Uh, there's a snap and a zipper. You pull it off. Sorry, sorry, I know you can't see. There, you pull it off and it turns into a big, ass, uh, big blanket. Uh, let me pull it out here. Sorry, I know this is bouncing around a little bit. All right, let's see. Let's see where I can set you down. Uh, get right there. All right. You can see this is a big, big old blanket. Uh, this is the Econ series. Both of these quilts are the Econ series, which uses uh, duck down versus goose down. Uh, let me see where the tag is. You can see right here, it's the Hammock Gear Econ 40 degree quilt. And like I said, it's one, one big blanket, right? But for the foot box, if you can see, the baffles are sewn vertical for where your body is, but horizontal where your foot box is. And that's to help alleviate uh, drafts when it gets cold. So what you do, when it gets a little bit chillier out, you just take it right like this. Uh, yeah, I'm not too, I can figure out the zipper. <laughs> Get the zipper in, zip it up. It's got a snap right here so it doesn't unzip in the middle of the night. Now you have your hole where your foot box is. Just cinch that up, boom. Yeah, you have a little tiny hole right there, but it's only a 40 degree quilt. You shouldn't get cold feet with socks on that. And that's the top quilt. I really like it. It has worked out very well for me. And, uh, you know, a lot of people say that duck down, you get a weird smell out of it. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I've never noticed anything crazy. Especially, you know, when you're camping, you really don't, you smell anyway. So what does it matter? And also, on the top of this, you put this up over your shoulders. You can snap this. This has a snap behind your neck, right? And you have uh, a, a pole that you can, uh, it's right in front of you. You can zip this down and cinch it around your neck. And then you pull the sides down around you. This also has tag lines. If you were to use this on like a pad or something like that, you could run a string in between here and it'll keep it tight underneath the pad. So it, I really like it. It works very well for me. So I have no complaints whatsoever. I love hammock gear products. Um, all, most of my quilts are hammock gear except for one. I have a, a local Libre 20 degree top quilt. And that thing is phenomenal. I should do a review on that. But yeah, so that's the gist of it. I really like it. And it, it suits me well for what I need. Uh, I'll go over this bug net just a little bit more detail. Now what I did is I kind of cut it on the ends up here. 
I put a piece of uh, strapping and I just sew it around it so that way it just sits right there on the knot where you see the gathered in there. It just sits right there and I have that on both sides like that. Got my drip lines there and it, I have it cut down at an angle and then at the bottom I have a piece of uh, shock cord gone through it which I typically don't do this if you want. If I, Let's see if you can see it here. If I want to, when I get in the hammock, I could cinch this up and it's completely cinched up and no bugs will get in. But the thing is, you have to think, as Frankie would say, bugs are stupid, so they're not going to find their way in there. Uh, although, I do have to say that when I was setting this up before, I caught a grasshopper in it. I thought that was kind of funny. <laughs> so, that's my setup for tonight. Um, I am not putting my tarp up. I'm going to be lazy. So, I should be okay. And then I got my pack hanging here. Uh, this is just a, a Sea to Summit strap. I have that around the tree and a carabiner going to my pack. And that's, uh, that's the gist of it. And that's the, the granite gear uh, crown 260. You see right there, it says it. Love it. Uh, there are a few things I wish it had. I wish it had a little bit thicker padding on the shoulder straps. And I wish the waist belt was just a taste thicker. Wider. Not necessarily thicker, but wider. If it was just a little bit wider, it'd be a little bit better. But I'm not going to complain. I'm happy with it. So maybe eventually I'll get another pack. But let me put this one through its paces before I go making rash decisions. I've been known to... Uh, buy stuff on a whim without putting much thought into it. That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a gear junkie. I'm sorry. I am a complete gear junkie. Uh, if I have three of something, I, uh, I need that fourth for some reason. <laughs> so, just like I was at the store, I was at Field and Stream the other day and uh, uh, LifeStraw came out with a, a new water filter that had a carbon element in it. And I was like, oh, I want it, I want it. And it took everything I had to uh, stay away from that. So, and like I said before, I have the Ultra Lone Peak 3.5s with the Engine G socks. They're drying out still. And I can't say enough about my GSI backpacking mug. Like I said, my brother in law bought it for me for Christmas, and I love it. I'm sorry, it's still not as good as my coffee maker. That's a pretty badass coffee maker. You yeah, it is. It. I should show you guys. Maybe I'll show you guys that yeah. later. I can do it real quick. Real simple. It, it's from, uh, I forget the name of it. It's from the 50s. But it's, there's normally a pot on the bottom. And all I did, I just, you put the coffee in here, pour the hot water in here real quick, and then set it on the, it's a 550 Tokes cup. And then everything just nests together in the regular bag that the Tokes cup comes in. It's fantastic. I, I'm not a big fan of instant coffee, and I haven't found a really good one yet. The Starbucks is pretty good, but there's nothing like fresh coffee. Well, while we're talking about gear here, let me show you this thing. This is an REI inflatable sit pad. They have two versions of this. They have un un uninsulated and an insulated. This is the insulated. And I cannot get over how comfortable it is. And it, I, I believe it was only like $20 or something like that. Yeah, it's inflatable. Chances are it'll get a hole in it at some point. But compared to the Z seat, the Z light seat, whatever they call it, it is phenomenal. I love it. It's uh, a lot more comfortable than the, the closed cell foam. So, as you see here, I got my food bag and my uh, garbage bag here just a gallon ziploc so and my garmin in reach i should do a review on that one of these days too i will i'll get to it i have all these big plans but i never have time to do it <laughs> well i have time to do it i'm lazy plain and simple so i'll get to it one of these days but i mean how can you beat this view look at this there are people camped on the other side of the river from us but we're enjoying it. 
a relaxing trip. We're actually quite tired. We're, I'm, I'm almost ready to go to bed now, so. But. All right, well, we're gonna play around here and uh, we'll talk to you later on.